Hey, it's Tom and Mike from Take Time to Travel. When you visit Cartagena, you have to check out the walled city. Walking through the streets, you'll find lots of beautiful old buildings, which are bursting with color and overflowing in lush greenery. There's also some spectacular rooftop bars, as well as many stunning patios and amazing restaurants. Today, we're going to take you on a full tour of Cartagena's historic center and show you the top places to see as well as the best places to eat during your visit. We'll start by walking towards the Clock Tower Monument and make our way through the main entrance of the walled city, past the many vendors and out to one of the main squares called Plaza de los Coches. It's a wide open square with one side lined with Colombian cookies and candies along Sweet Sally. But we preferred to wander around here at night where we'd often find lively events going on like the Candelaria Festival, which takes place around the end of January and early February and features colorful costumes, lots of dancing and music. We even saw some fire breathers on stilts Next, we'll walk a few minutes over towards Arm Square. It's a picturesque little plaza with the 16th century San Pedro Claver Sanctuary. And just behind, there's the Caribbean Naval Museum. From there, it's just a few steps over to the fortifications of the walled city. Built between 1614 and 1796, the historic center is surrounded by 11 kilometers of defensive walls and is outfitted with guardhouses as well as cannons, which protected Cartagena from continual pirate attacks. But let's keep going on our walled city tour and make our way along the picturesque leafy streets to check out some of the central neighborhood's lovely old colonial architecture. A couple of our favorites were this impressive white building on the corner, as well as this gorgeous yellow and white colonial building called Edificio Rafael del Castillo. In this area, you'll also find many shops selling Colombian emeralds, as well as lots of stores and boutiques, where you can buy souvenirs and knickknacks, and of course, a bunch of shops selling clothing and beachwear. In Centro, you'll also see tons of street vendors, like this guy who had a large fruit cart. We bought a Kaimito or star apple fruit, which he cut into quarters and sliced off the skin so that we could eat it right away. We'd never seen a Kaimito fruit before, so we were excited to try it. We both quite enjoyed the flavor. It was light and refreshing and tasted like a really juicy plum. Nearby, we found this tiny little food cart selling enyucata, which is a traditional Colombian dessert that's made with yuca and is very inexpensive. This sweet little square of enyucato had a spongy, doughy-like texture and a light nutmeg or cinnamon flavor. We'd definitely get these again. But let's continue on our tour and head over to an upscale Colombian eatery called Alma Restaurante for our dinner reservation. There are a few different beautiful areas inside, so we chose to sit in their luxurious main dining room, which had a high wooden beam ceiling. As soon as we sat down, we were served a complimentary bread basket. Then I decided to get a coconut lemonade, and Tom chose a Club Columbia beer to drink. For our mains, I got the sole of coqui with shrimps and coconut milk, creamy clavao rice with local cheese, smoked sausage, coconut oil, pesto, avocado, and sweet plantain. And Tom had the creamy mushroom rice with oxtail, which was slow braised and served with cherry tomato confit. Both were exceptional. Tom actually preferred the shrimp dish, but my favorite was the oxtail. For dessert, we shared the coconut snooky with three milk sponge cake with different coconut textures, ice cream, biscuit, meringue foam, fresh coconut, and organic mint. This also tasted incredible and reminded us of a coconut cream pie, but way better. We highly recommend Alma. It was our favorite meal in Cartagena. After that, let's go walk off a few calories on our way over to another one of Cartagena's popular squares, where we pass by these shiny classic convertibles that were doing a city tour. Plaza de Santo Domingo prominently features the Church of Santo Domingo, which dates back to the early 17th century and has quite an impressive interior. Just out front, there's the famous Gertrude Monument by Botero, which is great for photos. 
Next, we'll head over to another one of the city's main plazas, which is a great place to cool off from the hot sun. It's called Plaza de Bolivar and was always a busy place whenever we passed by, with tourists and locals taking advantage of the shady park. Across from the plaza, you'll find the Cathedral of St. Catherine of Alexandria, which is a national monument built in the 16th and 17th centuries. There are so many spectacular old churches in Cartagena's walled city. And just out front, there's a sidewalk lined with stacks of colorful artwork and paintings. Sorry Tom, keep moving. You can't have one. We don't have room. Also surrounding Plaza de Bolivar, you'll find lots of street food vendors, like this one selling arepas. We decided to give one a try, and chose to get the ham and cheese arepa, which she added some butter to, as well as another couple scoops of cheese inside. This ham and cheese arepa cost 7,000 pesos. It tasted okay, but it wasn't our favorite. We also thought we'd try the lemonade while we were here. It was amazing how quickly he squeezed the lemon juice into the cups. Then he topped it off with a scoop of some more ice juice. Afterward, we went into Plaza de Bolivar to give the small lemon juice a try, which I quite enjoyed. It was nice and refreshing. Now let's walk through the streets for about five minutes and head over to a popular place for lunch called Restaurante San Valentin. As soon as you walk in, there's lots of greenery and feels upscale with raw stone walls, columns and arches. It was super busy on the day that we went, but we were still able to get a nice table. And to start, I had a watermelon juice and Tom chose a Club Columbia beer to drink. Then we shared this gigantic dish, which was the fried seafood platter for two that came with breaded calamari, fish, shrimp, and some patacones. It was almost as long as the table and tasted great, although we couldn't finish it all in one sitting and had to take lots home. For dessert, we shared the caramel flan, which was just okay. We loved our meal at Restaurante San Valentin and thought it was a really good value. But let's continue and walk through some more picturesque streets in the Centro Historico. It seemed like around every corner was even prettier than the last one. As beautiful as it was to walk through here during the day, the walled city becomes even more magical at night. You'll find horse-drawn carriages passing by and the streets fill up with people during the cooler evenings. If you happen to be in the city around Christmas time, you'll find some amazing light sculptures, like this Three Kings display in front of the walled city's main gate, which is also festively decorated. And if you go to Plaza de la Duana, you'll find this over-the-top Christmas scene that was quite attractive. As we walked through the light display, Tom decided to bust a move for the camera. Now let's go and get something to eat at this little restaurant called Pesitarian. We went for an early lunch at this modern and bright eatery and ordered the Sushi Casa, which is a tower of sushi rice with salmon and tuna tatar, crispy shrimp with panko, avocado, and topped with crispy beetroot, as well as the shrimp curry bowl with creamy chickpea curry, plantains, carrots, onions, avocado, and rice. We ended up sharing both dishes, which were flavorful and super tasty. Another restaurant we quite enjoyed was just a few steps down the street and is called Los Tacos del Gordo. We got a table right at the front window, which was perfect for people watching, and ordered the Elotito Puerco to start, which is a bowl of sweet corn and chicharrones with cheese, sour cream, cilantro, and pickled onions. Then we got the Quesabiria tacos with slow-cooked beef ribs, roasted tomatoes, onions, mozzarella, and a cup of birria broth, as well as the Pastor tacos with pork marinated for 24 hours, onions, cilantro, and roasted pineapple. We really enjoyed all of the dishes that we tried here. The tacos were delicious, even though they were a bit messy as you can see. After that, we'll walk across the street to try some typical fried street foods at this stall, where they were frying up some arepas in this pot of oil over a charcoal fire. We decided to get one of the arepas, which cost 4,000 pesos, as well as one of the papas rellena, which is a deep fried potato ball. 
The papa's reina is stuffed with mashed potatoes and a savory meat filling. And the arepa had a crispy corn dough exterior and was stuffed with meat and eggs. Both were super cheap and tasted excellent, but I think the papa's reina was our favorite. Also on the same street was this fried food stall called Pacho Fritos Light. When we arrived, they were busy rolling out the dough, so we knew that everything would be fresh. We decided to try the deditos de queso, or cheese fingers, which was actually one of our favorite street foods in Cartagena. It was very tasty and inexpensive. Now we'll walk a few minutes over to the San Diego neighborhood of the Walled City. It's more tranquil over here compared to Centro, but just as pretty, with lots of buildings bursting with color, gorgeous old colonial architecture, tons of lush tropical greenery, and bushes covered in blooms. It really is beautiful wandering through these streets. There's also the quaint Plaza de San Diego to check out, where we found this little market, as well as the charming old convent of San Diego, and restaurants and patios surrounding the square. There's the Sofitel Santa Clara Hotel too, which was formerly a 17th century convent and has a few spectacular restaurants and bars, like this gorgeous patio called Jardin Santa Clara. This secluded terrace is surrounded by lush tropical vegetation, making for a very picturesque setting. And we had it all to ourselves. We ordered a couple of Aguila beers to begin our meal. And to our surprise, a few monks came out to light the candles around the terrace. And then the rest of the lights throughout the garden came on, creating a wonderful atmosphere. To start, we were served a complimentary dish of fried plantain chips, including a couple of dipping sauces. And for our mains, Mike chose the duck confit and mushroom lasagna, which was smothered in cheese with fragrant tomato sauce and came with a side of Creole potatoes with chipotle aioli and I ordered the char-grilled free-range chicken with hibiscus sauce and a side of Creole potatoes. Our dinner here was very memorable. Both the duck lasagna and the chicken were very tasty. We would definitely recommend Jardin Santa Clara. Also in the Sofitel Legends Santa Clara Hotel, there's this spacious rooftop terrace called Botica Santa Clara Bar. It has a scenic perspective of the Caribbean Sea on one side, and on the other where we sat, there's a picturesque view overlooking the courtyard pool. Mike ordered a Club Columbia Michelada, which comes with lemon juice and a rim covered in salt and spicy peppers, and I just stuck with a regular Club Columbia to drink as usual. This was Mike's first time trying a Michelada, and he was surprised by the mix of flavors around the rim, but he thought it was okay. He was glad he tried it, but he switched back to a regular Club Columbia beer after that. We love Botica Santa Clara Bar. It's the perfect place to grab a drink and relax on a hot night in Cartagena. Another rooftop that we really enjoyed was Mirador Gastro Bar. It's a popular place in the historic center of the walled city, with a fantastic view of the clock tower. We ordered a couple of Club Columbia beers to drink. Then for our appetizer, we shared the Carancho Ceviche with fresh fish marinated in leche de tigre, corn, avocado, ripe banana and grilled cheese. And for our main course, I had the vegetarian burrito with bell peppers, zucchini, mushrooms, grilled eggplant, cream cheese and caramelized onions. And Tom chose the Peruvian fish, which is the catch of the day in yellow chili sauce with shrimp and mashed potatoes. The Peruvian fish was quite flavorful. We really enjoyed everything that we had here. Nearby, there's also a beautiful terrace called Rooftop Urania. It was the perfect spot to have a Club Columbia beer to drink and watch the sunset over the domes and rooftops of the walled city. Well, we hope you enjoyed our tour of Cartagena's walled city. If you did, please like and subscribe and check out our tour of Hetsemani. And remember, take time to travel. Catch you on the next one.